So, Darren, you've appointed Dave Robertson as your manager with, uh, with Grant McCann as his assistant. Just talk us through the process over the last couple of weeks in, in how you've come to your decision. Yeah, um, basically the process has been, well, I'm back in America now, so I was over there for a good period of time. Uh, when I arrived in the UK, the first people I saw out of respect for the job they did at the end of the season was both uh, Grant and Dave. So we spent a good couple of days together. We went over a lot of stuff. Um, we obviously spoke about the 14. Look, when someone's in charge for 14, uh, 14 games, they can give you a lot of insight into what's going on at the club, regardless whether they're going to get the job or someone else is. But it was important to find out why we got to that point where someone needed to come in with 14 games to go. What was fundamentally wrong? You know, why have we been so inconsistent? Where have the issues been over the last couple of years? Yes, we can see some of those things, and some of those things we don't know about. And it gave me a great grasp and idea of what, you know, the things that needed to be you know, fixed and proved. Um, and I was very impressed with them for a couple of days. You know, I know they came in in a very difficult circumstances, and uh, everyone talks about them, that they steadied the ship. They did a great job. Uh, yes, we weren't fantastic in the last few games, and that was the inconsistency we struggled with for the last couple of years. But there were a lot of mitigating circumstances in that. And, I know a lot of people were throwing around the whole hoof ball thing and everything else, but where we were when they came in and everything else, we needed to start winning. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was never about playing like Brazil from the start. And as the season was finishing with the youngsters being thrown in, with more injuries to key players, you know, you can see the work these guys did. They did a great job. And uh, I spoke to uh, a few other candidates. I didn't introduce private ones away from the club. Spent a lot of time going through different things with different people, hearing their ideas, hearing their ideas on Peter Reunited, the current squad we have, and you know, the research they've done, spoke about our scouting system, our youth setup, our transfer policy, um, you know, their own expectations, where they wanted to go. Um, and to be fair, after, after I concluded all of them, I sat down and looked at it all, it was, it, was, it was really, really a simple choice. It was an easy choice I kept coming back to. People are saying out there, and they're going to have a go, some fans will say, well, you know, that was like an easy choice, or maybe it was a cheap choice. It was nothing to do with that. It was about the right people uh, who care for the club genuinely, and who I believe can do a job. But I think... There's two guys there who we put in with a bigger manager. We keep talking about these two, but there's a bigger management team on play. There's a sports science team, there's a goalie coach, mm -hmm. there's scouting staff, there's video analysis staff. There's a lot of people that come as part of the package with Dave and Grant, and uh, they have to get credit as well. The work they've put in and the work they are going to put in, if you give them all a fair, you know, a fresh start, and um, their own recruits, their own pre-season on the fitness side of things, and, and, and a fit squad without all the injuries, I think our fans are going to be impressed with what they're going to say. And uh, speaking to them and saying, you know, people talk about hoof ball, but I know, I know our philosophy from the youth system, the way we've played the last few years. And we'll play good football, but we'll play competitive football. Because it's great playing pretty football and passing sideways and, and, and whatever else, but if you're not getting three points, it doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, we want to be competitive. Bristol City, Preston, teams like that have shown there's an easy compromise in how you can do that. And I just think with everything going on next season, with financial fair play, with our younger players coming through, it was the right fit. And I spoke to the experienced players in the camp, and without a doubt, they were basically hands on heart saying, listen, the biggest mistake you could make is not, is not recruiting them and not hiring them and starting from scratch with someone else. And some of these players, I respect their opinions, they've been with us a long time, and again, they have the club's best interest at heart. Yeah, when you, when you look at the objectives and, and the targets for next season, what have you said to the management team and what you expect as a chairman and owner? I expect to be challenging for promotion. Um, I expect lucrative cup runs. I expect 100 goals. Um, I expect London Road, a great football surface once more. Now we've spent a lot of money on the pitch for our fans to be excited by what they see. I expect to see our younger players breaking through. I expect to see people like Marcus Madison, uh, Erhan, Harry Buderman, who, who were non-league a year ago, stepping up to the plate in their second year of professional football. I expect to see a lot of the other younger squad members that year older after the experience of last year and what it was like with an injury hit squad. We fell six points short. I expect to see a fully fit John Taylor. I expect to see uh, a fully fit Marcus Madison. I expect to see a fully fit Jack Baldwin eventually, and I just expect to see us a lot stronger than we were last year with the recruitment we make. So, uh, you know, I've laid out what I want. I've been made things to my words. Uh, they know what's required, and they know, like everything else, when you know, you're know you in football management, you're under the caution, you're under pressure. And uh, I won't settle for second best. And it won't be a case of going, oh, we need time, we need time, we need time, or whatever else. Listen, everyone gets time, and everyone needs a bit of patience, but... I want to be basically up there challenging. And you, you've sent a message as well. Obviously, they've got a three-year contract um, to show you what they're all about, and um, and they'll be delighted delighted with that. And the fans can see a bit of longevity as well. I've always been like that. I mean, bar my one mad season when I was getting rid of every manager I had for various reasons, I've always been pretty supportive. Uh, right through with Darren, and uh, I don't usually get it wrong. You know, uh, you know, 
um, Mark Cooper showing now what a, I spotted the talent there. He's doing a great job. Gary Johnson was, was a good recruit. We just didn't gel, but he's a very good manager. And even Jim Gannon was tactically very astute in what he did in a short space of time. So, you know, I have a good eye for this. And uh, I've been around now nearly 10 years doing this. So people have to trust my judgment. I pay the bills and, you know, it lands on my lap. And, you know, at the end of the day, you, don't, you live by the sword and die by the sword. And uh, I think they both do a very good job. And recruitment starts now, I guess, in terms of preparation for the new season. It does. We're negotiating on players going out already, um, and we're negotiating on players coming in. Um, both uh, Dave and Grant are in the midst of having negotiations with two Premier League clubs over a couple of youngsters that we feel will excite our fans and really do well in key areas in our squad. We're negotiating on some longer-term transfers to bring players in that we think will make a big difference, and everyone knows we need another goal scorer up front. So... We know where we went wrong last year. You know, that's the most important thing when it's a problem, knowing and identifying where the issues were. And issue number one was we could never name a fully fit 11, mm -hmm. not consistently. You know, that was a big issue. You know, we brought in wide players like Taylor, Madison to score goals and create goals. They hardly played 60% of the season. Um, same in, in the back, you know, and, and whatever else. You know, issue number two was scoring goals. Bar Connor, nobody else really scored any goals. And uh, he needs help. He didn't play fully fit for the end of the season and he still finished, I think, with 13 goals. 35 odd games so we feel in his you know second third season now as a full-time pro he could be up there for the golden boot if we get him the right strike partner we could have a hell of a chance and how excited are you as, as, as chairman and owner of the football club ahead of this next um next chapter in the club's history i'm very excited Philip. very excited because we've had a long period on the baron it was very successful we had lots of highs a couple of lows as it is when you're on a football club we don't do mediocrity it's not what we want to do this season. I'm just very excited to give these guys a full pre-season and see what they're made of. I think you're going to see a fitter team this year. You're going to see a young team come of age, and I think they're going to surprise people. I know people will be writing us off before we even start, but it's been a bit like that since I took over the club. But we have aspirations of, of, of doing things other clubs have shown and done, and Bournemouth are one of those clubs you look at this season and you want to emulate. A large part of their squad that went up to the Premier League came from League One, if you look back through the years. So they played a fluid 4-4-2. It wasn't, it wasn't any of the old diamonds or 3 5 two or whatever else. They kept it simple, sweet, and it was very successful for them. And they were key in all the key statistics out there, number one and two and everything. And that's what we've got to try and aim and strive for. So it'll be interesting to see how pre-season takes shape. That's all booked and organised. We've got a lot of games. We're off to Ireland on a very serious uh, training camp. We're going to play a game over there. It's going to be very exciting. So now we've all got to get behind them, lay our support now on the line and show our true colours as posh fans. Yeah, that, that's key, isn't it? You need everyone together. You need everyone supporting these guys. Always, you have to be going in the same direction, and uh, you know we've had a we've had a couple of uh, average seasons, some blips, if you call it that, winning the cup and finishing in the top six, and then last year finishing six points short. We've been nowhere near our own expectations of where we want to be. People blame me because I make false promises, but if I turned around every season and said, "Listen, we're going for mid table and we're going for a top nine finish," what would people say? Mm. It's not what I'm made of. It's not what I do. It's certainly not why I've hired these two guys and their management team to put in charge. From day one, I want everyone at our football club thinking championships, nothing else. That's where we need to be and that's where we want to be.